Now that we are power back, welcome back to some more Cosmo Tier. I am Stormrunner Gaming here, and today I am going to be jumping back into this game here. And I actually haven't touched it in a little while. Um, to be more specific, it's probably been a few months since I have played it here. And I believe the last update I remember was multiple different types of missiles that they actually added into the game. And so, of course, with missiles, they had to nerf it or try to help out other people not running missiles. So there have been a couple different updates with different types of flak weapons, I believe. And there's this brand new tractor beam that I'm interested to look at as well. But anyways, all that aside, I am really happy to get back into this game and going to be jumping into some creative mode here. And of course, creative mode is just like your sandbox mode and bounty hunter is your, I guess, campaign mode, if you want to call it that as such. You're just trying to collect money and upgrade your ship with said money in the bank account. But anyways, if you guys don't know what this game is, basically all you're trying to do is build a better vessel here, a fighting vessel. So you have different types of weapons like the missiles here. We have the flak battery, which I'll get to later. But you can build so many different types of weapons, so many different types of systems. And the thing I love about this game is um, all the AI and the people that move around the ship and control everything bring power to everything. Um, optimizing that and making everything work very fluently on a vessel is one of the bigger things you have to keep note of when you're creating your own vessel, even your first vessel in this game. But it is a really fun game nonetheless, but now that I am done explaining that, we can move over and look at a couple of vessels here that I've actually created with those tractor beams on here. I do also have a larger one on here that cost about a million dollars there with those tractor beams on the back as well. And sadly I have played around with the tractor beams here, but for some reason I cannot figure out how to do the push mode on the tractor beams here. And I don't know why that is, if you guys do know how to actually switch the mode for these, I'd love to hear that in the comments down below or at the community discord. But anyway, those are some pretty cool weapons, and they were just added a few days ago. And the thing that actually um, sent me a message or whatever tipped me off to this cool update to the game was Twitter, so I thank that for there. I'm actually following Cosmoteer on there as well. But anyway, enough of that. I saw a pretty cool... I guess video of this tractor beam being used and that looks really cool I'm really interested to see how people are going to be using that in battles and using it very strategically to help them in different combat situations as well the patch notes to the game did tell us that a couple of the campaign mode or the bounty hunter mode vessels were I guess retrofitted with some of those tractor beams on there as well. So that should be really interesting to see, um, I guess, in-game vehicles and AI using them to attack and defend themselves. Because definitely with that push mode, you can keep enemies at a pretty good distance there to use higher range weapons where they could not get very close to you. The only disadvantage I see there is if you are doing a multiplayer battle and you are constantly pushing them away from you, but you don't have enough thrust to keep a charging design away from your vessel, so they'll just push you out of the ring of death. And of course, like the name says, if you go out of the ring of death, you're going to probably perish in there and your vessel is going to be destroyed piece by piece. That being the sad truth though, I mean I think they'll be a very cool asset to um, vessels in the future, but enough of that. We also do have another update that is a little bit older, just bear with me here. We also have these flak batteries there that as you can see are a defensive measure against missiles here. 
because missiles are one of the longest range weapons in the game. Um, defending against them is a pretty difficult task and previously in past updates before the flak battery came out here the only thing you could do was spam a bunch of point defense on there and keep a bunch of people in that one localized area to keep power with those point defense systems but now that we have this guy here it is definitely a more formidable force formidable force against missiles there and it should help shoot down a lot more as missiles are coming towards you instead of having a bunch of point defense just scattered across the front here but one of the things i really do like and is innovative with this new system here is that those flak defense are not only in that defensive but they're also in the projectile weapons so if you don't know what this means they can also be switched over to attack other enemy ships so instead of just shooting down missiles these guys can also attack enemy vessels and do an okay amount of damage i don't think they're as powerful as cannons in the game or other types of weapons usually i mean they may beat out the lasers but the lasers are so cheap but the biggest problem about these weapons here is they actually do take those cannon ammo factories to keep them supplied with ammunition to fire. And that is a pretty big problem considering you have to put more crew on there, you have to put more space for them, and these guys are explosive, I guess, rooms. If they are hit by enemy fire, they will explode and I believe catch the ship on fire. I could be wrong on that, so they are combustible. That, and you need so much more crew to run that, bringing ammo and power to those flak batteries. As well as these things are just a humongous block of your ship as well. I mean, a uh, regular sized cannon, you could probably fit two of them there. Probably not in this configuration, but just defending that takes a lot more room as well because they do jut out from the front of the vessel here but enough of me blabbing here i think you guys do want to see some of this in action here so i am going to move that guy over there real quick i'm gonna see if i can pilot the smaller vessel here to beat the larger one i do sincerely doubt it though considering that that guy is probably three times the price of this little guy so I definitely do got to keep those flak batteries yep even at two times speed moving pretty quickly around all those missiles coming from the rear bays of this just annihilated him so let me actually I can repair him real quick and switch his allegiance back to player one I assumed oh I switched this guy's allegiance to player six so we'll let those missiles hit and I'm going to repair him real quick I'm interested to see if we are able to get this guy around before he starts firing I don't know if we will be able to keep all the missiles off of us it will definitely not be attacked by those cannons on the front end of it which is its redeeming factor and which gives it that big punch of a good attack vessel here so let me see what I can do to retrofit this little guy and get a better battle here. Alright, I'm going to be scrapping that idea of doing a battle with the tractor beams. It still looks like they need a little bit of work on them. I definitely do want to play around with them once they have the repel mode. Maybe show off a couple battles using different types of weapons and stuff. Maybe keeping people at a distance while using missiles or bringing people up close while they're trying to kite with missiles. So. I mean, like I said earlier, there definitely are some different things you can do to, I guess, like change around the statistics of battling here. I'm trying to get this one guy here, this super overpowered missile cruiser, up and running here. It looks like their ion beams are going to cause a little, a few problems here. But nonetheless, they'll probably disengage in a second or two. But I am just testing the sheer power of all of these flak things against a insane missile vessel here. And it looks like 
neither of them are winning or losing, considering these guys do have a few missiles to their name. They each have six on each vessel, so we've got five of them here. But this guy, I believe, has something crazy like maybe 50 to 75 missile launchers on there. So he's probably tripling, maybe quadrupling the amount of missile output that these guys have here. But then again, this guy does not have as much uh, anti-air defense or there's point defense on the front. He does have the cool trident design that does take out a lot of missiles, but it seems like he is losing that battle. But every once in a while, it does look like a few missiles are getting through those flak defense there so they are not completely impenetrable they definitely do have a better accuracy rate than the point defense but still they seem to let a couple missiles go through the defense net that we have set up here but all in all they this guy has no armor it's supposed to be meant for more kiting and running away but these guys having a bit of armor and all of that flag defense looks like they are winning there. And we can do one more thing to put the nail in the coffin of this guy and just put all five tractor beams just lined up on top of that guy and get up right in his face and just destroy him. Interesting that you can also use the tractor beams and aim at a specific part of the vessel here. I did not realize that earlier, but that is a cool effect to it. So we can actually aim at one part of it. We ripped the ship in half with the tractor beams. We are now annihilating it with those flak cannons using their attack mode there. And it looks like it is all but scrap now. That, I guess, like six or seven million dollar uh, beast of a vessel, the Missile Cruiser 2, is nothing but rubble in space now. So that is the destructive power of those flak cannons. I am definitely interested to see what the repel of these guys can do because right now I don't have a way of switching them around which really stinks but I'm interested to see how that will affect battling in the future. But anyways, that is where I will be ending this episode. Like I said earlier, if you do know how to switch over the, the I guess, the tractor beams here from the pull to push, um, if you could leave a comment down below or leave something in that community discord, that would be great so I can play around with that in the future. But anyways, that is where I will be ending this episode. So of course, if you guys like this, Please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with Cosmoteer and more of my content. But I've never been great at goodbyes, so people need me and I need to go.